be free from the burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you are real for the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power. If you're not telling others, Christ says, I must say this, Matthew 12, 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If you're not speaking repentance towards God and faith towards Christ, according to Acts 20, 21, then you need to examine whether Christ is really in your heart to be spoken out of your mouth. Saints, the early church, as Pastor Abraham was sharing, after Christ came out of the tomb, Peter, who had denied him three times, was filled with the Spirit. He wasn't just filled with the Spirit to dance or sing or praise. He was filled with the Spirit to preach. John, who was timid, starts to preach. They heal, cast out devils, and the same Spirit that dwells in us, the Holy Ghost will move us to do the same. We need to be a world-shaking church, an earth-changing church. We need to be taking the power of Jesus to this world. Hallelujah to Jesus. The Bible says everyone we meet, our job biblically is to be a purifier and a reconciler of them to God through Jesus. Amen. On your work, do people even know in your work that you call yourself a Christian? Or are you hiding it behind your back? Praise the Lord, boss. Are you a Christian? Oh, no, no, no. I just want a promotion. <laughs> in your neighborhood, do people know that you claim to be a follower of Jesus? Or are you trying to just get along with them? You know, when we were in India, in Kerala, in December 2006, we were going around preaching to the churches. We were telling them that no matter if the government said they would throw them in jail, no matter if the Hindus said they would come against them and kill them, they had an obligation to preach. People. Some of you might be from the States originally, some of you might be from India, and many of you are from Kerala. But you know what? The Hinduism is not the majority here. But sin is still the majority here. And you, God, has you gathered together as an army to go forth for him in the power of Jesus and break the sin all around you. The church is not supposed to be a nursery. We're to be an army for the living God. Breaking sin. Breaking the devil's hold everywhere we go. You're on your job to stand and witness for Jesus. You're in your neighborhood to witness for Jesus. You're in this church to witness for Jesus. You're in Houston for Jesus' glory, not your own. The Bible declares in Acts 1 8, but you shall receive power. Amen. How many of you have received power? How many of you are filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues? Hallelujah. Well, how many of you are living as a witness everywhere you go, like Peter and John and the apostles? How many of you are getting threatened to be kicked off your job because the power of the Holy Ghost is in you so much? How many of you are laying hands and seeing people recover? How many of you are casting out devils and seeing them go? How many of you are living like Christ and his disciples? We must do this! Listen now. Witnessing is not an option. Witnessing is a Holy Ghost activated state of being, which is a command from Christ himself. What was Christ left for the last command? Matthew 20 and 18. All power in heaven and earth is given unto me, Christ said. Go you and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you, and I will be with you until the end of the earth. Amen. What was his last command? Mark 16, 15. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Do you realize if you don't obey Christ and do what he says to preach, many of your family will go to hell. Some of your husbands will go to hell. Some of your wives will go to hell. Some of your parents, father and mother will go to hell, grandparents, children, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, uh, uh, cousins, and maybe you too. Christ commands, follow peace with all men. That means you need to be reconciled with God through Christ, living a life victoriously over sin, rejecting temptation, obeying Jesus all the time. And also you need to be used by the Holy Ghost to reconcile the world to the Father through the Son. 
people, again, evangelism or witnessing is not an option. It's a requirement in the Bible. How many of you believe you are required by Jesus in the Bible to love every person? Raise your hand. Amen. We are in Matthew 22, verse 35 to 40. Of the great commandments of love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself. How many of you believe you're supposed to forgive everyone you meet and deal with? Yes. Mark 11, 25. If you don't forgive, you need your Father in heaven to forgive you your trespasses. Well, how many of you believe you need to preach the gospel to everyone you meet? Uh-oh, less hands are up. Only a few hands are up. Now let me ask you a question. Uh, now, now saints, as the Bible declare in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Does the Bible say that? Does the Bible declare in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Does the Bible say that? Well, the same Lord Jesus Christ who said, love your neighbors yourself, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The same Lord who said, forgive if any of us ought to get you, we have ought against any. Is the same Lord who said, go and preach. Is that correct? Amen. Well, why is it that you believe it? It's part of it you need to do and part of it you don't need to do. And something to think about, isn't it? Do you want me to tell you why in the church everyone knows they have to love Everyone knows they have to forgive, but few think they have to preach. It's because of the devil. The Bible declares in the book of Revelation, the devil comes to try to deceive the whole world. He tries to make it seem like evangelism is just an option. That all you have to do is you know, be nice. You see someone on the street, you smile at them. But if a car comes and hits them and you see the car coming, you smile at them. Is that love? No, people are laughing, but no one's saying it. No, it's not love. If you see your brother about to be shot, about to be run over, you smile at them and say, uh, Namaskar, good morning. That would not be love, would it? But now if you see a car come, you say, get out of the way! The person might say, oh, you are mean. You're being mean to me. You're not being loving. But if you get them out of the way of the car, would that be love? Yes, they might be offended. They might say, oh, you are making me feel good. But still, you've done what is best for them, temporally and eternally. People, if we're going past people every day on the way to work, school, in our neighborhoods, and saying hi to them, Namaskar, Yesu uh, Nalev, and they're going on to hell, is that real love? Jesus commands us to love our neighbors ourselves. If we've loved them ourselves enough to repent, put faith in Jesus, be filled with the Spirit, and follow them of the scripture to love our neighbor as ourself would mean to tell them to repent, tell them to put faith in Jesus, tell them to obey the Bible, be filled, and obey him as well. Would that be correct? We must do it. How can we uh, do this? How can we uh, follow peace with all men and tell these people they need to repent and be converted? Well, there are a couple things we'll look at in the limited time we have. Number one, we need to see the world as God sees the world, number one. Not the way that we in our minds or society says to. Number two, we need to act towards the world as God says to act towards the world. And number three, we're going to look at, we need to biblically preach to the world the way God says to. Turn with me, if you would, to 1 John chapter 5, please. 1 John 5. First thing we're going to look at is how does God see the world? This is very important. We're going to look at verse 19. This is important because Acts 10.34, Peter says, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But I, I, I must submit to you, I believe a lot of the church in this world is respecter of persons. People respect those that are close to them, their friends, people they like, and thereby not deal with the people as Christ commands us to. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, what does the Bible say? The whole world is under the control of the evil one. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll, I'll read in the King James. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. Where are you going to stand on the judgment day? Where are you going to land? On the judgment day, 